Shreveport Police Chief uh, Ben Raymond is here. Hey, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ben, welcome back to Keel. How are you doing this morning? Doing well, thank you. Chief, there was a, uh, an incident this week where a suspect was shot by shot and killed by police. I want to get your take. We haven't talked. We talked to the sheriff yesterday. I wanted to get your take on what happened. Police officers don't ever want to shoot and kill a suspect. We'll start there, I guess. Certainly. I mean, this is no doubt. I think it's been said that it's a tragedy for all involved. It's a tragedy for all the law enforcement officers uh, forced into the situation. It's a tragedy for the uh, the victim's family, uh, for citizens that, that had to witness parts of that incident. So certainly not something that, that any of us hope have to uh, wish to have to do within our career. Chief, give us details about the ch- uh, details rather about the chase, if you can, and what are the ground rules? And because when we talked to uh, Sheriff Steve yesterday, he said. You know, it varies from situation to situation. What can you tell us about this situation and what the ground rules, what sort of uh, what was going on in the minds of the officers? Because I guess at some points the speeds were like around 80 miles an hour. Is that correct? And I don't know exactly what, what the speeds got to. I know that the, the pursuit did, you know, get onto uh, open interstate highway. So certainly 80 miles an hour would probably be, uh, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, you're looking at citizens in general probably driving 65 to 70 in, in a lot of those areas so 80 wouldn't be extravagant speeds for a pursuit when we talk about uh, you know policies and procedures um certainly this is a, this is still early in the investigative process multi-agency investigation i can tell you just in general when we talk about uh, a fleeing felon as in this case tennessee Gar- versus gardner is the the court case that comes to mind um that gives a lot of precedence and, and ultimately what you have to weigh when you determine to continue in a pursuit such as this one or to end the pursuit, to disable the vehicle as we ultimately did, is what is the biggest threat to the safety of the citizens? Is it, is it a bigger threat that we allow a person to go free who has proven uh, him or herself to be violent and capable of violence? Um, or is it better that we um, participate in that pursuit, which also is certainly some danger there to the, to the public. Uh, but does that outweigh the, the cost of allowing this person to go free? In this instance, uh, it appears right now that it did, but certainly it will be a full investigative process. And if it, and if it determines otherwise, then we'll take appropriate actions. You know, I, I mentioned we talked with uh, Sheriff Steve yesterday morning, and I think this is something that you and I, that we have, have mentioned, have brought up with you before, is I'm constantly – honestly amazed at the number of times in situations that that police that law enforcement officers are fired on and do not return fire in this situation what was what was sort of that that tipping point where okay we're going to shoot back you know and again i can't i can't speak on that uh one i wasn't i wasn't there when the officers made that decision so I, you know, you know, through the investigative process, we'll have some answers to those questions. Uh, interviews have obviously been conducted with the officers, but I haven't looked at any of the investigative reports. Uh, there's been no need, you know, for me to review any of that until until it's complete. So I can't really tell you in this instance uh, this was the deciding factor. But but it, uh, quite obviously um, that that decision was made by more than one officer. Uh, several officers, some deputies, and a state trooper all came to that decision at the same time so obviously there was something that occurred that led them all through their knowledge training and experience to believe that uh, this is the um this is a necessity at this point there's no other reasonable actions that could be taken uh short of lethal force this man mr odom his father is quoted i believe on channel three saying that he thinks his son died in a suicide by police that he wanted to be killed by police um that happens, I guess. I mean, I hate to even say it, but I guess that does happen. People want you guys to be the ones that kill them. Is that really happens? You know, when you hear about suicide by police and, and you know, not trying to be funny, but obviously you can't ask the, the person at this point, is that what you wanted? Were you trying to get the police to kill you? But you do have to look at some situations and some events um, and then just wonder, is that was that the, the precept? Did this person really want to just die themselves with a suicidal and just decided to go out um, and, and have someone else, the police officers in this case, uh, be the one that, that took their life versus them taking their own. I don't know that we'll ever, you know, reach any finality if that's the that case or not in this instance. Body cams, did you have some of the officers that have them and want to talk a little bit more about them? But in this case, mm-hmm. did you, do you have some available? We did not. I believe that uh, at least one of the other agencies, 
um, had a body camera on on one of the uh, the troopers or deputies involved, but I, I can't I can't speak with uh, complete uh, knowledge about that. I just I do remember hearing some some information um, that night of about a body camera. Uh, but none of the Shreveport police officers involved in this instance had body cameras. That came up during the city council this week about equipping our officers with body cameras. Is that something you're going to aggressively move toward uh, at this well, point? We, we have had body cameras. I, I know last year, because I did the budget, uh, and the year before that, because I used that you know, to assist me last year, we've listed body cameras as what we call a, a unfunded need, which means a, if we had an unlimited amount of resources, we would have asked for this as well. Uh, we just didn't have it. Um, very receptive, uh, very supportive of body cameras. You know, and I have cautioned people. Um, you know, it's not the it's not the answer to everything. I, I'm I'm afraid what 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 citizens what they want and what what you get aren't exactly the same. So I think people expect to see the Netflix Netflix film. I've got a perfect overview of everything that occurred. I see the entire situation, and it's all right there in front of me because you have a body camera. In reality. Um, a lot of times, you know, body camera is put on a person's rig belt or on their shirt, so there's a lot of movement. And depending on where I'm, I'm positioned during an incident, you know, you may get partial coverage. You may have a complete blockage of the camera. Uh, it may be blurry. It may be lopsided. So, again, it's not going to be perfect. But anything that's going to help us to, to build the trust and the confidence in the citizens uh, and, and indicate that, hey, we're doing the right things, and if we aren't, then, then – you know, this is this is exactly what happened, and we'll certainly take appropriate action. So I'm supportive of it, but there are some expenses there. The cameras themselves uh, cost several hundred dollars a piece, uh, and then the biggest kind of the unknown is the storage fee. So the number of officers we have dumping all that information into a server, because obviously you wouldn't want the camera if you didn't keep the information at least for a certain amount of time to determine do we need this or not. Uh, that's a lot of storage space, and, and you have to pay for that space. Police Chief Ben Raymond, thanks for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Certainly. Yes, ma'am.